We love you! Hello and welcome to Tribe Talk, the Galway Hurling Podcast, with me, Patrick Early, and David Connors, where each week we'll discuss and divulge all the goings on in Galway Hurling. We'll be taking an in-depth look at the club scene and of course focusing on Intercounty. In this, Shane O'Neill's first year at the helm, all of which we'll do in the company of some special guests and former Galway greats. So do come along and join us on Tribe Talk, Galway's dedicated hurling podcast. Um, Welcome back to another week um, episode of Tribe Talk. Um, I suppose busy weekend, county final weekend as usual. It's uh, always a hectic weekend and Kinney Park was uh, hopping, shall we say, for the the 200 people that were in it. Um, Before that, before we look back at the county final, though, first I'm delighted to be joined by um, Sarah Seals manager and ex-player Eamon Cleary. Eamon, it's great to have you on. Yeah, it's good to be here. Thanks very much, David, for asking me. Not at all, not at all. Um, I suppose busy w- weekend out your way as well this weekend. Uh, the ladies winning the Camogie, I suppose, celebrations were a bit, probably more muted than they normally would, but uh, still a great occasion for you. Hi. Yeah, it was it was great. Now they they had uh, mixed emotions for some of them because they uh, lost the junior one on Sunday. But uh, I suppose the big one was Saturday with the senior and. Um, Another great win and a good game, actually, in fairness, by all accounts, a, a good game, uh, especially for considering the Sarsfields girls, um, their training was put a bit uh, up in the air for the last couple of weeks with the COVID and everything, but uh, no, they, they were um, very good, in fairness to them, and uh, got over the line in another win and makes the lads looking over from <laughs> extremely, <laughs> extremely jealous now, but uh, in fairness to them, it, it, it's great because uh, it's keeping the whole parish going. Um, they have been the last couple of years and uh, it keeps us buzz going and it probably keeps our appetite uh, going as well to see yeah. to see them win. And as I said, like you would be massively jealous. Um, you know, you'd be delighted for them. Um, but the other side of it would be you'd be massively jealous of it. Uh, so you would. But look at it. It's, um, it's good that there's, there's silverware coming back to the parish anyways. And... Uh, on a regular occurrence for them. <laughs> yeah. as, as, as I as I said to Kevin when he was on, I just it just seems to be like Hurling and Camogie, it's it's everything in Sarsfields, isn't it? Across New Inn and Bullion Bullon, should I say. It's um you're a you're a club probably by and large with small numbers, you're punching probably way above your weight, like in, in one sense. Um yeah, look at I suppose, yeah, yeah, like yeah, it's and it's all in a short period of time as well, like because the Hurling Club is is only around 52 or three years and um, the Komogi is even less again like um, uh, what they're doing at the moment is is massive like as you know they're not even that long in the senior ranks and um, to be getting the success they're getting and I suppose it was the same with the Hurling like they were they were quickly once you know they were set up in 66 and they had a, a senior title won in in, um, in 80 like so um the Camogies are following on, in fairness to the way the, the Hurling Club started and followed on as well. So, yeah, but look at it, it is a small parish, but as you said, there isn't much more to be had out this side than, uh, than to be playing um, playing sport and it keeps everyone together and it keeps all the friendships good and strong, so it does around, around the parish. And um, look at those loads of numbers, uh, it's stronger to getting in terms of uh, yes. numbers and stuff because like in, myself and Kevin were coming along, you were talking about always panels of maybe 22, 23 and lads were there that, that maybe be two grades under and they'd be still going, you know, lads would be 14 years of age, we coming in on minor teams and stuff like that, but like now mm. you go down training there and there's young lads everywhere, so there is and there's big numbers and we had two under 14 teams there a couple of years back, like which was never heard of in this club, like mm. so you know, the population has been coming up as well though, so, which is really, really helping like and, and it's great Absolutely, I suppose. I suppose the nineties really would have probably revolutionised the club and inspired a generation like yourselves. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you would have been, you'd have probably been looking on at that point, and you would have said, "Jesus, this is incredible!" And we probably want a taste of that. And then maybe in twenty fifteen, as a player yourself, you got to, you kind of got to experience it a small bit. You know, win the county title. It must have been, must have been great for the parish as well. Um, it was, yeah. And I suppose the fact that it it probably came from a bit of nowhere in in twenty fifteen, and yeah. Had- the names coming back again, like you know, you had fellas there winning winning uh, a county middle that would have 
seen their fathers win win one as well. And you know, I suppose for us, I remember the back end of the nineties, like I would have been around for the for the earlier ones, but I would have been only in short yeah. that stage, I suppose. And, <laughs> and uh, I wouldn't remember overly remember too much of the early ones, like the All Ireland stuff. I remember the day I was going to them and stuff, but I wouldn't remember much of the matches now. Of course. Um, but like, yeah, the the the, the later on ones, I suppose, from '95 and 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 them ones on, then like I'd remember them county finals and and things like that. And yeah, look at it; it, it sparked a lot of it. And uh, I suppose we were lucky enough as well. That 2015 team came from a lot of. Uh, a lot of lads on that had two under twenty one titles. We were lucky enough to make a breakthrough at that stage as well, in around zero six and and zero eight. And um, a lot of them lads were the make up of that senior team in twenty fifteen. And just I suppose it puts a weight on your shoulders when you put it on the jersey, um, knowing that that's what was expected. Because I suppose, and as you said, there was so much success in the nineties. Um, it left us with no choice but to try and. Yeah. emulated and, and to try and carry the can with the jersey and you know we went a long time uh, before 15 we went something like 10 years without even getting to a quarter final um, which was you know wasn't acceptable I suppose for this club really like so it probably made 15 sweet then when it did come around that it did come a, a small bit unexpected to a certain extent we believed in inside in the group we always believed that we had the players you know what I mean we had an array of of players that were on Galway panels and that were the makeup of winning under twenty Galway under twenty one teams that won all Ireland's and stuff like that, but we just couldn't seem to make the breakthrough for whatever reason. But in fairness to Cahill Murray, when he came in, um, he made a lot of changes in terms of how we looked at the game, our attitude. He brought a massive amount of professionalism to it, and I suppose that's what that's what got us over the line. Then and the tradition then that helped once we did start getting to the knockout stages. Yeah, there was you know. There was always that sense of belief that, yeah, well, like look at traditionally, we can we can cope with these these big days, semi-finals and, and finals, and and look at it worked out, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, because it, well, you always know, like just looking on from an outsider, you always know what Sarsfields are going to bring. Like it's going to be a, you know, it's going to be a real battle to the field, and that's kind of something you always bring to the, you know, the occasion. I suppose you, you kind of kept going, maybe then yourself, just personally, you kept going then for maybe another couple of years before you. He decided to step away uh, and into management. Was that was that a, yeah. an easy decision, or was it was it kind of the, just a natural progression for yourself? Did you always see yourself going into management, Damon? No, no. Uh, uh, when I played in the, I was playing the semi final in twenty eighteen. Um, no, I had a good look at the jersey that day after the match and put it when I was handing it back. But no, like I yeah. probably felt that day that it might have been my last day on the team. Uh, but I had no intentions of walking away at that stage, and uh, you know that that Christmas came, and a few of the senior players we were maybe Cahill had said that he was, you know, he had his time given, and that he was uh, stepping down. Um, you know, we were trying a few different avenues, and there was just nothing coming for us. Um, and I don't know what triggered it or what put it in my head, but I suppose I felt that. You know, maybe offering things in the field was gone for me. Maybe that I could offer something on this line, even be just for a year or two until they could get our ducks in a row and maybe get someone someone in. And um, Noel Kelly was after uh, probably saying that he was he was finished. He was struggling with injuries for the last couple of years. To be honest, I don't know how he stayed playing as long as he did. The man used to be able to walk after matches. Um, and you wouldn't know it the way his performances were. You wouldn't think there'd be anything wrong with him, but he was... Uh, struggling with injuries and uh, he was stepping down and I thought maybe that it was something we could do and uh, Mickey D a great stalwart for the last couple of years came in with Carl Murray and um, he's massive into his strength and conditioning and things like, like that and we felt that he'd be another good lad so we said we'd take it on and then we got uh, Peter Cooney on board as well and it just kind of all snowballed one after another and so the next thing we were landed in the middle of the job and <laughs> yeah. um, went from there really how would you? How would you? Now you have two years done. How would you kind of assess your two years in in charge? I suppose. Firstly, have you enjoyed the whole pro process of being management? Have you, have you enjoyed it yourself? <laughs> um, I don't know how much I've enjoyed it. Now I look at a course you do, and it's it's like look at I'm. I suppose always been um, very passionate about Sarsfields, and uh, so the fact that 
I was let near the job in the first place was 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 a great honour for me. Um, mm. Something that I might have seen myself doing, but a long way down the line than, than when I did do it. Um, but yeah, look what I did. I enjoyed. I loved being on the training ground. Loved being in around the group of lads. Like I had a great time for for all them lads there. And you know, it's great to get to know some of the younger lads because if I had hung up the boots. The Alex Quinners, John Cooney's, Mark O'Regan's, like these would be just young lads to me. I wouldn't know them personally. So it was great yeah. to get in around all them young fellas and, uh, and, and, and get to know them and get to see what they're bringing to, to the club and the way that the, I suppose the future is in good hands with a couple of good young lads coming. But, um, mm. you know, so uh, you would enjoy it, yeah, you would enjoy it. But it, it's a completely different ball game. Like I was someone for suffering for nerves when I was playing but my god two nights coming into a game I wouldn't be sleeping or anything like there'd be nothing <laughs> and there'd be constant phone calls and text messages at all hours of the mornings between myself and Mickey D and and yeah. and um, Acro and even between myself and Kevin there'd be phone calls going back and over you know trying to I suppose calm each other down and uh, things like that but um, no, I like look at it is it's enjoyable, but it's completely different. And it was it's out of my comfort zone, really, a small bit. So that made it that little bit different. But ah, look at you would you you'd enjoy parts of it and other parts of it to be stressful enough. It's busy enough as well, like the yeah, like phone yeah. calls and stuff. It's not that enjoyable, no matter what way it is or whether you're winning or not. Mm. But you know, once you get onto the training ground and and once the matches, once the ball is thrown in, then you just get stuck into it and and you would enjoy it. Then yeah, you you know what I mean. Was it was it difficult to say you know to transition from a player to management like you know you would have been soldiering with the boys beside you one minute and next thing you're you're kind of you're you're you could possibly be leaving a let out that you know what I mean that might feel hard done by and this kind of crack is it I can imagine it's very challenging in that sense you know having been playing with them for so long and then you know they have to kind of you have to look at them in a completely new light and they have to look at you in a completely new light we'll say. Yeah, yeah, there is a bit of that, but luckily enough, we 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 have a tight group, I suppose, to a certain extent here, and 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 like that, when you are a small, a small parish, you, you'd know the way, the lads so well, and I think if everyone is honest and open about it, generally when a fella's not going well, if you have to leave him out, you know, he generally knows about it, like he knows it in his own head, and it's in the back of his mind, and I suppose it's it's about being honest, you being honest with him, I suppose, and them being honest with you. And in fairness to the lads now, the group, they've been great to myself and Noel and Mickey D, like they really have, and you know what I mean? And um, like, look at you, had hard, hard calls to make and, and you leave lads off and, you know, things like that. And But as I said, most lads would be honest enough about it. And I, I think at this level, generally lads, lads are honest and they do know themselves that maybe they're not going well and... Mm. I don't think I'd any measure falling out with anyone anyway. So, <laughs> to be honest, yeah. I think some of them would have expected me to be taken off anyways. It's coming from, I was ratty enough even when I was training and playing anyways. So I, I don't think they would have been too surprised by anything anyways. Yeah, if it, like just, just in terms of how senior hurling has changed, like say probably since you started, and just even the management now, there seems to be a whole lot more to it. There's analysis afterwards, you know, there's, there's video analysis, there's stats, there's there's a whole different variety to management that maybe they might have been around ten years ago, and that's that adds a whole lot of like and a whole dynamic to like say extra amount of work as well that you probably you know you mightn't have had ten years ago, but now it's it's nearly a full time job senior senior club management by itself. Like, yeah, yeah, it, it is. It, it, like, look at it, it, it is. But the other side of it as well is the playing has gone that way as well. So you're you're constantly, you know. Like most senior clubs are probably training four times a week and expected to do two gym sessions in between. Mm. So, you know, or rehab or there'll be something going in between. So the fact that I suppose for myself and Noel went straight from playing into it, it probably wasn't such a shock to the system, albeit the workload was completely different. Yeah. Uh, there was a lot more sitting around the table and having meetings and stuff. And as I said, you'd be phone calls maybe with your physio or you might have phone calls with the stats team or they'd be sending stuff on or you'd be watching a game breaking it down or the three of us could watch a game and go through it ourselves you know and things like that but in terms of the time that's gone in like the, the players put in a massive amount of time as well like so as I said the fact that I went straight from it one to the other probably made that transition in terms of time fairly uh fairly thing but yeah I did look at it's changed massively from you know from when I started playing um 
it's just it's a completely different ball game you know you didn't you didn't even there was no mention about matchups or who you were going to be going out marking you probably didn't even think it until he arrived in your corner like and yeah, yeah. And, and and things like that and you know there was um it was probably more relaxed and 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 you know maybe a bit more more enjoyable as well but um i didn't win much and like you know, I was lucky enough to win a county cup, but I'd say if I look back through it, I probably lost more games than I won. So, you know, um, the fact that it has changed and professionalism came into it, I think was a big part of us winning a county cup. So hmm. from my point of view, it's good for the game. And I look at the more um, the more a player puts into it in, and the more he sees the management putting into it and the club putting into it and, you know, it, 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 it everyone buys into it. And I guarantee you that, you know, Thurlock Moore and Thomas's are probably two of the most professional setups in 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 Galway, and that's probably why they contested the county final. You know what I mean? Because they're ticking all the boxes. You can be sure of it; they're ticking all the boxes. You know, absolutely. So just just on this year, then I suppose looking back, I suppose initially, you know, Joseph being around full time would have been a huge boost, and then you would have had, you know, I I know Evan Cox and you know say Alex Kinnear and you know I know Marco Regan was there maybe a year but you know you had a, a nice emergence of young lads as well that were kind of willing to step up it was a it's kind of a, a different kind of team over the last two years we've kind of seen as well I know the core is still there you know you have your usuals as well but you've had you've had a fair bit of change in the Sarsfields team you know the starting 15 will say yeah well I like our first championship match in on would say that I was manager for was against Capitagal and we had lost something like eight fellas that had featured in the semi-final against Thomas's the year before weren't available for selection that day. Um, but like you said, you mentioned some young fella like Evan Cox came in last year. Fair enough, his first game would have been the quarter-final against Mellows, but you know, he was pushing all year. Marco Regan came in with a bang with a late goal in that first round game against Cappy to steal it at the, at the death like, um, and announced himself and... Um, Alex Din and John Cooney came in this year. Even Kenneth Cooney, who'd yeah. be a bit older than them, but he's his first game to start, or one of his first or second game to start, would have been the semi final in 18. So he's relatively new to the whole thing. Yeah. And sure, Darren Morrissey was still under 21 this year. That's right. Yeah. They're young, and um, you know, look at we to play most of the games without Joseph last year. So having him back was, was a massive boost to us this year because, like, you know, look, we all know how, how good Joseph is um, from when you see him playing at Galway, but I think his, his club form is such a credit to him because he's one of the standout players. There's a lot of talk this year about how well the county players were performing, like, but he's just one of the standout players for me, no matter what happens with Galway, whether they win All-Irelands, lose All-Irelands, mm. go out early, and the, he always brings massive performances for Sarsfields, like, and digs us out of so many holes, like, and... Yeah. It, we're blessed to have him to have a county player like that. And Darren Morrissey's carrying on that mental now as well. Like he, he he's always playing well for us, you know what I mean? And there's never he's never shying away from anything. Do you know what I mean? No matter whether they're in the depths of goal or train or anything, like he's mm. he's coming with, with great attitude um for the club, like which is which is all you can ask for from a club manager, like you know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. I suppose then first game out it's it's Portum, it's on T G Gahar, it's we all know about the the two sentences off now at this point, but it was kind of a it was a banana skin in a lot of ways, Eamon. Like, as you know what I mean, like everyone had kind of wrote Portumla off coming in, and but you always knew that was probably a game they targeted. You, they probably targeted against you, and you know, you you, you, you did face a, a serious battle, but I, I suppose you managed to get over the line in the end. We did, yeah. And like, look at the the group when the group was done. Uh, I don't know, someone I met someone and they said, "Oh, you'd be happy enough for the group." <laughs> I was kind of saying, well, I'm as happy as uh, Portumna and Casagara with the group as well. Because I think <laughs> the three of us would have been nine it up. We would have said, you know, we'll all have a good crack at St. Thomas's and see where it takes us and we'll beat the rest. And I think Casagara would have said the same thing. And I think Portumna would have said the same thing. And I think Portumna would have looked at it and said, it falls good for us having Sarsis in the first round. They probably would have. Of course they would have. Like, you know what I mean? They're, mm. they're, they're still a good side. Um, and that game was in the balance up until the Sinnons off. It, it really was. Like, Joe Canning was just after solo and through, putting uh, one a whisker over the angle. Like, and um, we were the few points up at the time. Uh, like, I felt we were doing enough. Um, we weren't playing out of our skin by any means, but I just felt we were doing enough. Uh, but, 
you know, you just don't know how it plays out, especially when you have a player like Joe Kenyon on the field. You don't know. I'd like to think that we would have pushed on and, and won it regardless. Um, yeah, yeah. But you just, you just don't know when you have, and even the likes of Bruno Mara was having a good game that day. Like they're, they have quality players, and they have a couple of young lads coming. Adam Fogarty there in the corner, who was hurling well for them in the uh, coming into the championship in challenges and stuff. The word out there was that he was hurling well and stuff for them. So. Look, at, we, we knew it was going to be a tough game. We knew it was going to be a battle. Um, and we were matching them and we were keeping our noses in front. Uh, look, at I suppose, I'd like to think we would have pushed on, but hmm. you just don't know. And once the send and ask came, ah, look, at when you go down to two men, um, you know, it's very hard. And, and in fairness to our lads, I suppose, that's, that's what was in front of them. And they pushed on and kicked on. And look, at that scoring difference came down in the end. It was vital. It didn't come in the end. We didn't need it in the end. <laughs> but if that Cashelgar game was a draw match, you know, that was going to be the scoring difference against the Portumna was what was going to stand to us. Like, you know what I mean? There yeah. were a few extra points. So, That's for sure. Um, look, at, it was first day out and you were just happy to get a game at that stage of the year. And it was great that the championship was starting. But um, yeah, look, at it was a battle and we knew it was going to be a battle. Mm. And then I suppose... In one sense, I know you Thomas is next on, next on the tracks, like, but you had two points in the back pocket, like, so it was kind of a, you know, probably in a lot of people's eyes, maybe not inside in your group, but it was a shot to nothing for you. And you, you know, you ran them, you ran them all the way, and maybe, you know, without without say Darren Schell going off and Kevin Hines, like that result could have been a completely different story. Like, you know, just that from just looking on the end, it was kind of a, it was a strange game, Eamon, was it? Because it never really flowed. It was, you know, it was very stop start. There was a lot of freeze and it just, you know, it, it, was, it was a strange kind of contest, I thought, I know. Uh, it was. It was an exciting game, uh, I've mm. no doubt, but, uh, you know, it didn't, it didn't live up to what it could have been. I, I look at it, I think there was too many freeze in the game. There wasn't a dirty stroke in it. Uh, there was no melee, I don't think, in the game at all, like, you know what I mean, or Shamazel mm. or whatever you want to call it, like, yet, I think Conor Cooney hit 13 frees, Kevin Cooney hit 10, they both missed a few, you know, so, like, it's just a pity because that would have been a game that two teams that if they did open up maybe could have served up a, 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 a thrilling contest, like, um, and look, we were in a good position, but like we've said all year about St. Thomas's, they've looked a beaten dock at times and yet they find a way to win. And, mm. you know, I thought maybe with seven or eight minutes to go, even after the, the, the two boys gone off injured, we still looked, we still looked value that we could get something out of it. Now coming into the game, ourselves and Thomas's have never been much between us. You know what oh. I mean? That game in, in 18, um, we were, I think at normal time they were two points up and they got a goal the last puck of the game to put five between us after we had, you know, yeah. pretty much pushed, gone full assault on their defence. Um, so there was nothing in it that year and I think maybe the previous contest before that we might have got, got over them was kind of a ding-dong battle for a year or two between the two of us. But um, no, so there was never, look, look, we fancied ourselves going into it. We said if we got our, every, if things went right for us on the day that that um, we were well capable of beating them. but. Yeah. you know that's the beauty of uh, of hurling and sport and that's what makes Thomas's uh, such a good team these mm. battles uh, they find a way of, of getting over the line so they do and they did that against us uh, that day as well so they did and um, regardless of uh, of who, who went on or who, or who went off or anything like that you know there's nothing to say that they weren't going to grind that out either way you know Mm. I suppose then it, you know, it was a year of huge dramas and late finishes. But Jesus, there was probably the the mother of all finishes. Maybe just by over overshadowed maybe by Ask of Orna, but uh, against Castlegar, like it was a a, a game. Being honest with you, because I I was at it, it looked like you were beaten. I didn't think there was any way you were going to pull it out of the fire. And uh, <laughs> that's <laughs> you could take that one. But lo and behold, you stuck in, and you know what I mean. Right to the final whistle, you you kept at them and kept at them, and Kevin Coney came up with you know a magical goal that was missed on the stream. Like Jesus would have been you know yeah. definitely probably goal of the season. I don't know. I I could feel for anyone that didn't get to see it because I was lucky enough to see it in person. And then he stood over that late free and struck it. Like you know what I mean. So it's such fine margins all year you know what I mean in that in that group alone like you know it could have gone either way like Cashel could have beaten Thomas the, the first day you could have beaten Thomas the second day and then Cashel could have beat you last round as well you know what I mean there was absolutely nothing between those teams but yeah is that like what was it like at, you know a final whistle of the Cashel game it's your waters has been all over the place oh, sure massively all over the place because look at yeah. I think at one stage were we nine points down at one stage so we were so something like that yeah something like that yeah ah. Sure, look at the credit to our lads. They just stayed playing and 
Mm. Um, like massive credit to Kevin Cooney because he had missed two frees that were bread and butter to him normally early in the game and another fella could have hung his hat at it and by all accounts um, Castle Gar were, were on top for the majority of that game like so it definitely wasn't a day for our forwards like they were they were under serious pressure at the time but like Kevin stayed at it and stayed working and you know like he picked that ball up outside the 40 and he just showed that turn of pace he has and like off the yeah. hurl at a tight angle he absolutely rifled it it was it was yeah. a tremendous goal but you know um there was another man with <laughs> his cape on for us all year was Kieran Dolan and goals like because mm, you know yeah, we, that's true. that game could have been a lot worse um we could have been a lot more uh down at that stage only for he had made a good save and he'd actually came out Casagar had came down, had attacked the, the far side of the stand, we'll say, and they had an easy point on, and they went to switch a ball across to a loose man for a goal, which they probably should have just tapped on the score. Kieran Dolan came out and intercepted it, like, and, you know, when you look yeah. back now, they were the fine margins that was in it. But, um, no, look, it's credit to the boys. They stuck at it. It wasn't it wasn't going for them that day, like, but they didn't hang up. They, you know, they didn't throw in the towel. They stayed going, and... Look, we got a bit of luck with the extra time, so we did, but sure, we played to the final whistle and mm. Kevin put down the ball that time and uh, Noel Kelly ran into him and he said, uh, make sure you hit the ground. And Kevin said, I know, yeah. And Noel said, no, but make sure just make sure you hit, go low with it. And Kevin yeah. said, yeah. <laughs> and he roofed it <laughs> to the top of the net. So he had his mind made up anyways of what he was going to do with it. it but uh, yeah. it was a great finish. And as well, I said, it was a credit to him because... It probably wasn't going for him for a large part of that day, like, but just mm. shows the bit of character that he had, like that he he pulled it out of the fire for us again. And look at maybe Castle retreated a bit, probably. And um, look at we we as I said, we stayed going till till the end and and got the bit of fortune that there was enough time in it to to get ourselves back into it and and then just to get the last shot at it with the free and mm. and stick it, you know. So look at. You have days like that, they go again you some days sure. as well, as, as I'm sure the casual management will tell you. Like, yeah, just 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 on casual, then just another point on it. Like, they seem to be just again watching on. This has been a very difficult team to play against this year. You know, they're they kind of the style that Fergal Lynch has them set up. It was uh, you kind of it, it probably took you a while to figure them out as well, and kind of you know how to best kind of circumnavigate maybe someone like Sha- Sean Neary who was sitting you know sitting back in the pocket a lot. Yeah, yeah, uh, you know, uh, we had seen them the first day because their game was streamed. Um, I got a look in in Lockray the day they played Portumna. Again, Sindanasso was it was hard to judge, but, you know, they were playing the sweeper very well. And the sweeper comes with that whole defensive mentality, but in fairness to them, they were, they were, they were playing it well and they were using it, attacking very well with it. So they were getting men around the ball and running it. Um, on the day it did, it took us a long time to come to terms with it. Um, I suppose if we'd lost that game, a lot of it would have came on my head because we had a, you know, a bit of a plan in place at the time and we went away from it a small bit when we had the breeze at the first half. I think we had the breeze in the first half and uh, we just, you know, we changed tack a small bit and it wasn't the right decision. We should have stuck with our gut at the time. Um, but no, look at it, as I said. The boys came to terms with it, but like a, a victory like that totally comes down to the 15 lads that are abroad in the field because, um, you know, there isn't much you can do when the tide is going again. you from the line. You can make certain changes, but if the lads don't react to them on the field, you know, yeah. um, that was it. Like, look at Castlegar, uh, they're a good side and it, it, it wasn't, Sean Neary got a lot of the how well he was playing in the pocket, but they had so many other fellas that were doing doing great work all around the field like against us Jason O'Gorman was was giving yeah. us awful trouble he was the man that was uh, linking the play like he was always there to take the ball from defence and 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 he had always seemed to have time and he was picking out nice passes and hitting in good ball and um, you know the boys up front as well especially in the early rounds um, the two boys in that two men full forward line like they would just, like, give Thomas an awful time for, for, for 40 50 minutes like so they did them two lads you know that's it. And I suppose then you'd, you know, you'd, you'd a preliminary quarter final and Ardrahan maybe. I suppose you probably, Ardrahan actually performed pretty well, but kind of the goals, 
the goals really probably were were the, the huge difference in, in the game really and I suppose maybe perhaps it kind of showed a bit of difference too that you had a, you had a hard senior A run you know behind you already and you played a lot of good teams whereas maybe there's a bit of a drop off in quality between senior A and senior B like it's it's probably it's not being disrespect, disrespectful to say it like there, there is a there is a gap there still um, yeah, well, sure. You talk about a gap between senior A and senior B. You had a Hasker, a puck of a ball away from relegation, and yeah. they're a senior A team now, and like you know, acquitted themselves well against one of the season teams in Capitagal in a quarter final. So, I think the timing of our goals was 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 key that day, you know, because if if we hadn't have got them when we got them, um, you know. It was more and more that our Graham were going to grow in confidence, and which was going to make it harder and harder on us to, to especially when the underdogs come in and if they can get a, a bite at it and start to grow in confidence, it does make it very hard to turn the tide, like you know, because they will really roll in. But so I think the goals really, really, um, really killed them off that day. So they did, and and look at we just seem to have that bit more quality than them on the day, and. Mm. As I said, the goals were the goals were were a big factor for us that day, and I, like I think here in Dolan pulled off an early save as well that day. So he did another great save again mm. early on in the game that day. Like so, uh, shortly after we hit a goal. So you know, look at goals win matches, and and we had four of them at halftime that day. And you know, regardless, the game was probably put to bed at that stage. You know, we had too much quality, I suppose, at that stage that we weren't going to to let it slip. I'd say that you know, hopefully, I said you'd like to think that. <laughs> yeah. The, the challenges don't come any easier, like I suppose Thurlock then in the, the quarter final, like a, a high scoring free flow and hurling game. Um, I suppose there were six points in it in the end, but it probably, on reflection, it probably wasn't a six point game, like, you know, truth be told. Um, no, I'd like to think it wasn't, anyways. Uh, a free flowing game, looking back after the county final at the weekend, maybe we shouldn't have let it be a free flowing game, and uh, we might have been closer at the end, but. Mm. No, look, it was a cracking game. Uh, it was a cracking game of hurling to be to see and to watch. Uh, even when you come out on the on the wrong side of it, um, there was the first half. At the two goals was like we had come into that game and we hadn't conceded a goal. It wasn't something that we had, were particularly talking about or anything like that. But above all yeah. days, if we hadn't conceded them two first half goals, we would have been in a great position at half time. The game might have developed the same way. You know, there's no telling that, but you know, no more than us getting them against um, our Drahan at the right time. Uh, Thurlock Moore got got them at the right time, and like, look at their use of the ball was brilliant. They were superbly clinical against us, and their six forwards really hit it that day. Like, you know, Sean Loftus won four, Sean Lennon, um seven points, um, Connor Walsh got the goal, um, you know. They were they they were moving the ball well and so are we so, you know so are we so are we but they um they just got their noses in front and once they got their nose in front the restarts they were good at the restarts on that day and the start of the second half we had two misplaced passes and we got turned over for a shot puck out in the first five or six minutes and that once they got that distance then they you know they kept us at an arm's length we got it back to three at one stage but you know they just kept it as arm's length the whole time so they did. Yeah, yeah. Um, just, just on terms of the structure this year, Eamon, I suppose it changed like COVID. Due to, due to COVID, it was needed. Like, but did you prefer the the groups of four and the groups of six, or what did you, what did you make out of it now on reflection, looking back between the two years? Um, well, there's definitely more excitement to it. Like, look at I, I, I'd have no issues with it, but I'm sure if you're Cassie Gare or one of the teams that, mm. do you know, Tommy Larkins, for instance. Um, they probably would be because they were out of it um, maybe after losing to seasoned senior A teams and yeah. you know there was teams in senior B marching on that maybe hadn't as tough, tough as test I think if they're going with the groups of four I think they just need to put the 24 teams into a, in, in, in together like you know what I mean I I, I know there was like you, people might say there was a gulf in class between ourselves and Ardrahan I don't overly believe there was that much in it because as I said we got the goals at the right time and as I said you look at Hasper this year from being a puck of a ball to getting relegated to being up senior senior A so you know maybe maybe the groups of four is the way forward maybe put them all put everyone in together and, and, and see how it goes for a year or two um, I just feel if you're in senior A there has to be a small bit of an advantage like you know what I mean 
I suppose to, one thing, uh, one, thing you could, one thing you could maybe work around would be maybe I don't know maybe three teams coming out of the group in senior A and maybe just the top team coming out in senior B like that could be one solution there but then I suppose it's it's I suppose it gets you know a lot of teams are gone then very early as well from the senior B Jeez, side yeah, yeah 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 I think if we learned if we learned anything this year like it's that we want to be hurling and we want to play matches and the time of year as well that it was ran off and made an awful difference so it did like on the clubs, on the players, on injuries, I'm sure. Fair enough, we had a short pre-season before the matches. But, you know, if you think about it, if we were to start there in a normal year, like, you wouldn't have to be doing any of that hard running through shit and muck in January and February, pulling your legs out of the muck. And, you know, it, I'm sure it has to has to impact the bodies and, and shorten careers and, and contribute to injuries. So you'd be hoping like that... If they were to, whatever way they run the championship, if they can run it in the split season, that the inter county goes first, we'll say, because, you know, they'll be playing in places like Crow Park and Thurles and all the top stadiums. So the weather isn't really going to impact it that much. And, and let the clubs off then around, you know, August, September and, and give it a couple of weeks, say that it's going to be X amount of weeks and whatever structure there's in, is in it. Like, look, there's arguments for everything. There's arguments for the old way. There's arguments for the way it was ran this year and um, you know and, and I think it, it was a credit to the county board and fairness the way they got it going and and ran it off and luckily enough that we got it all done and dusted uh, mm. by the skin of their teeth but you know it is a credit to them and and I think it is a good structure and there's loads of excitement to it and maybe there needs to be one or two as I said I'd be happy enough from a Sarsi's point of view but I'm sure the Tommy Larkins and the Cassigars and a few teams like that might have been a small bit aggrieved yeah, um, when they were knocked out of it, but I suppose that's the nature of it. Maybe that's it. That's it. And I suppose twenty twenty one. I suppose will we will we see you back on the line again, or have you have you have you signed the new contract yet, or anything like that? <laughs> there's definitely no contracts around here, at all, but uh, <laughs> no. Uh, look at there's no decisions um, made in that now. Uh, mm. Just trying to uh, uh, pass me time now at the moment, but. Uh, no, look, we didn't overly, overly think about it or talk about it yet, um, so we didn't. So no, nothing, nothing saying and see yet. <laughs> no bother, no bother. Look, that's that's perfect, Jim. And look at uh, you're going to wait around with the where we look back ahead and uh, look back at the final yeah. at the weekend. So we'll 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 chat to you then. Right, we'll move on to the the next the next segment of the show. So um, Chunky's back with us again. Kevin, how's the crack? How are you getting on, lads? Dave, how's things? Good, How are you getting good, on now, Kevin? Good. Good, good, good. I suppose county final weekend. Um, I, the probably resulted probably half the people in the county thought of, and the other half probably disagreed with it. Uh, Thomas has done enough in the end. Um, I suppose, Eamon, you probably you probably faced both of them this year. Kind of, what were your thoughts even coming into the game, or what were you what were you thinking about the what were you thinking about the match, or how did you feel it was going to go? Well, I suppose before the semi finals, I was all for St Thomas's. I just feel they had they have the best team on paper. It's easy to say it now. But maybe if you were to give me a free bet the week of it, um, just the way they, they seemed laboured in a lot of their games this year and I was kind of starting to maybe swing a small bit towards sort of more, uh, you know, look, at it was a hard one to call. Um, definitely the, probably the two best teams in it anyways. Um, but sort of more were probably coming a bit more form and uh, hurling a bit freer, I suppose, than the way I'd probably put it. But... Uh, mm. You just can't write off. You can't write off St. Thomas's like, and and look at them. We're going for the third title in a row, and they were never going to let that go easy either. Like uh, regardless of their form and experience, was going to probably probably going to be a, a big factor in it, which which I think it was in the end. Mm, yeah, Chunky, I suppose at half time, it, t- it looked just like Torlock were in a great spot. They would have had they were level after playing into the into the teeth of a, a strong breeze. We'll say. Um, they had probably an extra seven days rest as well down on top of it, and probably at that stage you, they'd probably played the better hurling as well. They'd, their shot, shot selection was a lot better, and you know it looked like it looked like Torlock were going to be the team to do it. Yeah, uh, to be honest, at half time, yeah, probably I'd say the odds were probably in Torlock's favour. To be fair, mm. uh, Tom's probably would uh, would have been overly happy because they they pride themselves to me in the way they use the ball, like so. Uh, with with the breeze, they started taking the last five or ten minutes of the first half. They started taking on probably crazy shots from out the field, which isn't usually like them. Like the, the a lot of wides, but yeah, at half time draw a game, they, they wouldn't have been overly happy. But fair, you know, you have to hand it to them. Like you know, they didn't panic. 
probably did their best hurdle against the breeze and went back to what mm. they're, they're more used to, like playing, playing through the lines and they have they have the capabilities. They even said they're like they're they're probably you know to me at the start of the year I would have said they're the best team from seeing them last year first hand down at the right. Like you know I said, geez, I, I couldn't like for a club team. No, they didn't reach them heights to be fair. No, but they didn't no. have to. But the one thing you have to to hand to them is they they dug it out like that. Many of their forwards were were brilliant. But geez, their work rate like couldn't be questioned. Like you know, for so, so, some of their forwards that'd be used to scoring five and six points, like they never stopped working. The Jared Burks, Aina Burks, Burner Burke as well. Like you know, to be fair to them. So mm. yeah, back to the original question at halftime. Yeah, the happier the two teams was Turlock Moore, and that's for certain. Yeah, yeah. I suppose it, even even not at halftime, maybe coming up to. You know, what was it? I think it was 53 minutes. Sean Lin- Sean in by sector the post and put Turlock in the lead for the first time since you know the first minute. Like, Eamon, uh, did you did you think at that point still like it's, it still looked like maybe Turlock Moore were going to pull it out of the head? Yeah, I, I actually thought Thomas's were starting to look a small bit leggy at the time, and uh, but when he got the the one the dug outside um, that he missed, I just thought that kind of give. Give probably give Thomas as a small bit of a, a lease of life because they probably said like these lads aren't shaking us here like we're still only a point down, and you know as Chunky said there you'd have to give massive credit to them because they did look at at times they did look a bit leggy I felt and and yet they just found the second wind in the last I think once they hit the sixty minute mark they seemed to just get this for the last four or five minutes they dug out everything they made it as much of a battle as they could. And I was looking at Conor Cooney, like, and the freeze, he was so, you know, he took his time coming to every ball. He took his time over every one of them, even a bit longer than he usually does. Mm-hmm. And I think Thomas is, you know, maybe, I don't know about it, but maybe Chunky can say when you're playing in so many county finals, I think they knew well that they said, we'll just keep this tipping along. We don't need to rush it. Even if we go a point or two down, we don't need to rush it. And they just, you know, they were happy enough with the way they were going in the second half and I'd say they just that air of confidence about them they, they knew well they were going to get over the line I think uh, even despite that they, when, when they went to point down I'd say they were confident that they could dig it out Yeah I, I, I suppose with Lennon's chance there that you, you alluded to you know two points that point in the, in the game though Chunky would have been geez, it would have been a massive lead like you know the yeah. scores weren't coming very freely and I suppose weather conditions didn't really help the matters either like and if Thomas is oh. kind of if they could, so, you know, you know, if they could dig out that second, you know, that that two point advantage, you know, you'd have never know where it would have went. I'd say it was probably a turning point. To be fair, but I think it was a point. But I think Thomas is, they weren't going to do panic anyway. They're going to play to the end of the whistle, and they have been in this situation in a lot of games this year. And you know, they're they're, they're well seasoned county final. You know, the last whatever three years, four years. Um, but back back to that point, a few lads have mentioned to me during the week now, but. I don't know a lot of lads that aren't fully agreeing with me, but I think if Turlock Moore had that chance again, I, I think there was a goal opportunity in that. If you look at it again, you had Barry Cannon, who, to be fair, was probably a little nervous to me playing the playing the game, and but he was okay. Like, but he a little nervous first county final. That's to be expected. I no doubt they'll be back again. But yeah. he was inside Sean Lennan. I know he'd been picking off points, and be fair to Sean Lennan, he was probably man of the match. Like. You know, definitely from Turlock Moore's side of things, mm. but um, it was I on. think it was, it was on. if that was earlier in the championship, he would have put the head down. Matthew Keaton got a point there in the second half as well. A lovely little After stick pass over, from yeah. one of the lofters. Yeah, but I think yeah. if that was if that was our game in the quarter final, or if that was any of the group games, he'd have put, Goal, they'd yeah. put the head down and they would have went for it yeah. because that's what they were doing all year. They were they were going for yeah. things like you know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. You could see Barry Cannon had the hands up, like, and, and mm. to be fair, I can't remember which Thomas's defender was tracking him, but he, he was labouring now. He was 10 yeah. yards off. And it, it, if the pass was on and he got it, it was goal. And then it was yeah. game over for me. No, yeah, yeah. if, if he tapped it over the bar, it was probably one of his easier chances. It, it could well have been, could well have been game over as well. You wouldn't know, like, but yeah. uh, as I say, you, would, you wouldn't fought him. To be fair, he was brilliant. To be fair, yeah, oh, he and, was, and yeah. for, for a young lad in his first county final, like Jesus was lads doubting, you know, he's got a few points here and there in a couple of club games, but geez, he arrived to the county final and not only did he score fourth and play, but he was on a lot of possession, like to be oh, fair. Yeah. I 
wouldn't. Uh, I wouldn't see anyone would fault faulting him anyway. Jesus, no. You, above anyone, you wouldn't fault him from a Thurlock point of view. And even if there was an early nerve set, he had them kind of settle down early on because he he'd a point within twelve seconds. Like, and it was is a brilliantly take a point underneath the underneath the stand there. I don't know if you, you remember, but it was a it was it was a, it was a serious score. Like, but I suppose. The, the score that made the difference happened right afterwards where it was what a long David Cherry ball in and broke to Conor Coney and chance opened up and he went for it and you know that, we're looking back at the final score like that was that was the difference between the game between the two teams that were finished yeah it was a great goal as well and if mm. if if you um looking back at it it was a puck out that went down the middle and went over over Conor's head and uh Thurla kind of brought it out a bit and it just goes to show the opportunist, opportunist he is because he kind of drifted in then, you know, and it, it, I think it was uh, Dara Burke got over it and popped it out to, to Sherry and he probably had a pop by all accounts, I'd say he went yeah. for a score. Mm. But, you know, Conor Cooney, early in the final, you'd think another lad would be racing towards the ball, but he, he's just seen that maybe they were a bit light at the back and, and uh, he drifted into the space and broke out to him. It was a great goal and, and as I said, he, he just kind of drifted in out of nowhere that you wouldn't, I wouldn't have expected he would have done it at the time. Like, mm-hmm. I what, suppose... One, the one thing I'll add on that, lads, is oh, you'll notice that all good teams come the big days, like your Kenny's or the lads who win county finals, an early goal. How many times mm, have you seen an yeah, early yeah. goal? And you look back after and you say, Jesus, like, there's no doubt in my mind, Conor Cooney, yeah. Dara Buck, these lads were thinking, get on top of Turlock more quick. To me, for Turlock Moore to win this game, in my head, I would have said, they probably need to be go four or five up and drive on with the legs, etc., and hope Thomas get tired. But Thomas has stated that Thomas has then, on the other hand, probably knew, get an early score, a couple of scores, get a goal. And they were always they, within a point of them, like, and you know, within a point of champions like that, can experience it massively. Yeah, yeah. I suppose the, the loss of Dahi lads beforehand would have been, well, I know he played, but he was probably just there in kind of body, really, more than anything else. He wasn't he wasn't anywhere near right, as far as I know. It's it was kind of an injury picked up against uh, Montpellier for Cora Finn, and um, you know he just I know they started him and everything, and he was probably probably very eager to play in the whole lot. But you know it was it just it just it, it would have been a bit, very disappointing for him. You know what I mean? Like you know he probably would have been his whole hurling career waiting for waiting for a crack at a county final, and, and this to happen to him beforehand. Yeah, to, to be, uh, they had no choice but to start him, even if he was carrying it in, though, because, you know, you can't run the risk, especially a player like Dahi, that you'd uh, bring him into a game and he'd have to go, like, it'd completely be deflating for them. And, uh, but, you know, like, they were still, they still took the lead and with only a couple of minutes to go. So, yeah. you know, he's definitely an influential player and, you know, but you have to credit them. They didn't, they didn't let it let it affect them. It didn't seem to affect them. They stayed going about their business as best they could. Hmm. Um, maybe he would have stemmed the tide in the last couple of scores that Thomas has got with his experience and that like, um, but you know, I suppose that one we'll never know now at this stage. It is, it's a pity and it's a pity on an individual or, you know, for him personally, like to, for that to have happened coming into it, you know what I mean? But hmm. it's the risk he ran as well, I suppose, playing the, playing the football the week before. Yeah. Do do you do you think he would have made much of a difference? Well, obviously he would have made much of a difference. But do you, do you think Chunky he would have made a, enough of a difference maybe for that you could have seen the result being changed or anything like that if he was fully fit? It's hard. It's hard to know. Like like oh, he was probably be, to me he was probably the player of the championship midfield. Like even though he didn't do anything extraordinary, but he mm. did the simple things extraordinary really. Like and he he kind of kept her up more ticking, but. As as Eamon said there, they, they kind of didn't lose sight of their system and they, they, st- they stayed at it like and they were the, the killer for me is they did what Thomas did in the in the first half with mm. the wind like you know they they had their players out in the half back line midfield. John you know, Moore, for instance, had two mighty points in the first half, but then two crazy wides, not crazy wides, but you know, two bad wides, Sean Loftus, another one, Sean Lanan from look, shots they probably weren't taking on. What's his name? Centre back, like who did fine as well. You know, it's first yeah. county final and hurt yeah. a lot of ball, yeah. but like it wasn't their game for the last two years, as far as I could see. Like you know, there were they, another thing I'd say is Sean Sean Lanan for all his good hurling. I just felt they probably should have thrown him in full forward, a corner forward for a bit more, maybe in you know, even in on Finton in the second half for a while because he was hurling so well it didn't matter who was on him he was going to do a bit of damage and he was running at their defence as well so mm. I, 
I don't know. It's would oh, he made a difference? Like he, probably, like he probably would, but would they won it? I'm just not sure. I just think the way Thomas has went about their business, I I, I think they were going to get over the line. Yeah, yeah. That's that strong finish, you know, towards the end from Thomas's three points on the spin when it looked like he was getting away from them. It was probably a you know, a real champion statement, you will say, you know what I mean? And you've touched on it already, just the experience that they have now at this point, like, you know, it's you're like it, it's so hard to win, you know, a three in a row chunky. You you know you know about doing it like but like there's there's only yourselves and Athan Rye really that have done it, you know, in the last fifty years. Like it's it's not easily done. Ah, look, to be honest, which I, I I don't know, but I I, I don't think Thomas's would have been would have been even thinking about three in a row, or they'll be thinking about four in a row. They just they seem to go about their business every day, and like they have um, they they a youth now. Like say with Bortona, we wouldn't have had too many lads coming into the team. But if you look at Thomas's mm. the last day, for me, the probably players that carried them over the line, like to be truthful, is Finton Burke. Shane Cooney, obviously Connor, who's around a while, and O'Shea Flannery. Yeah. So the three of them four lads, to me, they're new lads. Like they're only 19, 20. They're only breaking into the scene. I know they're around the last few years with Thomas, like, but they're still only young lads, like you know. So they're they're lucky in that sense. They're they're breeding young lads with them as well, young Duggan and a few more lads. So like that's probably keeping the likes of David Burke and and uh, Connor Cooney and and James Regan, who was brilliant as well the last day, like you know. Probably yeah, keep them yeah. lads going, and to me, that's probably what got them over the line. Because if them lads didn't hurl, I don't think the, I don't know the elder statesman had got them through. To be honest, like because they were probably labelled a small bit now with all the matches. Yeah, that, that's for sure. Because it, 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 the young lads really did did stand up through it, like game. And I suppose, I suppose for me, it was probably the the, the two squares that was probably won and lost. Like Winter Burke was outstanding. You know, mind of the house against uh, not mind of the house since he went back there. But Oshin Flannery has had a, has had a super year for them. Like, geez, I think he finished with Jesus. It's a two two twenty something. I think you know what I mean from 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 Blake. And he kicked three points in a, a county final for a lad that's just got his leaving surf results. It's it's fair going in its own right. Yeah, he's had a great year, and he, 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 he like as Chunky said there, they are bringing in youth into the team, and by no means had they an old team. But you, you have to keep bringing in one or two fellas the whole time, like because David Burke is probably the oldest there. And like, is he thirty two? Like in terms of a club player, like it's it's not, mm. it's not, it's not old. Like worryingly, they're going to be around for a couple of years, unfortunately. You know what I mean? But like Oshin Flannery, the first the point in the first half, it was probably a ball that uh, Ronan Burke was was there should have he was there ahead of him. He should have muscled yeah. him out of it, like. But he showed some great tenacity to win the ball, and and you know they kind of both slipped out over the line. He picked it up and went through, tapped it over, and he's been a thorn in the side for so many defenses. Like he's he got four against Cashel, he got mm. three against Lockray. Like you know what I mean? He was scoring in all their games. I don't think he drew a blank. I just no. looked at it today, and he didn't draw a blank in any game. Like and that's so they have a young fella now that they can rely on every day is going to get a couple of scores from play, and the way he's like he's played most of the game in the inside line uh, on Sunday, but in other games he's done what the likes of Anna Burke does and Conor Cooney does. They could pop up in any of the six positions, and he can do that. He did it against Clymer Daly. He was in one minute, and the next minute he was out. And you know he's fitted in so seamlessly. It's you know it's it's frightening really for from other teams looking in at it. Like because he is a right good bit of stuff in fairness to him. Yeah, yeah. It was probably it was probably a day for Backstop really, wasn't it, Chucky? Like as in the you, you touched on it earlier on, but I had the Thomas's forwards really hit top gear, maybe. You know, I know Brendan Farrell yeah. kind of contributed when he came on, and Oshin Fenner, will say, and Conor well, Cooney, but... Firstly, Thomas is one care. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, 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 on a serious note, but secondly, like, ask any team nowadays going out, like, you know, all you want, all you want out of your forwards, there's no manager now asking your, asking your corner forward or full forward to go out and score three pints or try and get two pints. It's that day is gone. You're going out mm. telling your corner forward to work, work, work. Don't let the corner back get when he gets it, hound and work, support, filter back. And to be fair to the Thomas lads, they did that in spades like. So as I said, there was no one really being looked at to have been called ashore for Thomas's like because they, they were working so hard. Like even as I say, even Bernard Burke he came out the field and he struck ball like you know they they all added to the, the win like they didn't just win it by not working. 
So yeah, yeah. Well, I know what you're saying. Like you know, it was dominated by defenses, but geez, the defenses didn't get any handy ball in either because most most forward lines will they, they'll work off lovely low ball in, but neither both. I thought both forward lines worked fierce hard. Like you know, it wasn't a, wasn't a massive great spectacle of free flow hurling. Like you know, Tom or oh. Tur- Moore probably would have been quite happy with what Tom's has scored from play. Like you know, if they thought before the game. Probably thought they might get over the line, but it just it just shows you how hard Thomas has worked. But the last thing I'll say back to Oshin Flannery, to be honest, he he had a sensational county final, like mm. for a young lad, like do you know he he did like us, and, and once again it was the it, he got three unbelievable scores, but he won probably two or three frees again. Yeah, yeah, and, and, yeah. And yeah, one, yeah. One, of, one, of, one of them he got out in front of his man, like and. It's a it's a real old trick in the African trade. Like he got out in front of his man, slowed down. He was knocked over, free in, like in front of the goals. You're kind of going, geez, for a 19 year old this size, because he probably had the pace to go up and pick it up and try and turn. He knew what he was at. Take yeah. on the man, yeah. get foul. So he was sensational to me, and the rest of the work might be hard. Yeah, yeah. I suppose I suppose just on that then, uh, conditions maybe didn't help either. We're talking about not, you know, wasn't a free flowing game, but. Do you think if conditions were better, maybe him and the game might have flowed a bit more? Or do you think it was always going to be a battle like that? It was probably always going to be a battle because maybe with the week that was in it and seeing the way the form that Thurlock Moore were bringing into it, Thomas has probably said to themselves, we will bring it into a battle. And I'd say they were happy enough for it to be that way. So they were. Um, but defences on top, Thomas is at six wide at, wides at, at half time, you know. For, so for all that Thurlock Moore might have been happy with the performance, some of them were... You know, Aina Burke and Dara Burke definitely had two that they'd normally slot over. Like, um, I think uh, David Burke had one as well, you know. So, Thomas's, they were they were still, you know, they were doing okay. Like, they were ticking away at it. And, and it was kind of a, I suppose it was a funny game. Maybe the conditions did. Everyone seemed to be putting the ball wide on the same side as well in, in both yeah. halves. So, they did. Uh, you know, the breeze probably wasn't straight forward down the field. It was probably going across a bit making it hard on, hard on them. But I think Thomas's would have been happy enough with it being a battle for the day, you know what I mean? Because they're, they're battled hard and, and they're experienced in them situations and they have won a county final that they have been well on top. They've won a county final that they were maybe down at half time against Mellows, was it two years ago? Mm. Or was it last year? And it was Mellows last looked, year, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And two years ago then they give them an 18 that they kind of just blitzed it out of it. So they did like, so look, at they know how to win and... and they were betting so many times this year, supposedly, you know, we looked on top against them, Kashigar looked on top against them, and yet they dug it out. So I think they were quite happy with it being a battle. And, and as Chunky said, like, if you're a back and you're after coming off the field, Mark and uh, the likes of Aina Burke and Dara Burke and Bernard and these lads, and Jesus, you know all about it, like, because you you stand over a wall, then lads are going to come in as hard as they can, like, and especially in the rook, they're brilliant in the rook. You know, one lad will hold it up and he'll be trying to lift it, but you'll see some lad will come in one side and he'll just try to the far side with it. Like, and their work rate is just brilliant. So it is, it's, it's, it's massive. Like, it. and for them to still have that hunger and to be still able to bring that work rate going for the third county title, you know, it, it just shows, it shows a great mental strength. Like, yeah. We, we spoke in a chunky, I suppose, maybe but Thomas's can kind of hurl you either way. They can hurl you, as, as Amy mentioned there, like, you know, in the battles, but they can, you know, other days then they can rack up cricket scores as you know as you know and like but uh it's yeah. they're 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 a formidable team like in fairness to them and they deserve you know plenty of credit for the performances over the last three years we'll say yeah look at even you mentioned the cricket score right that game against Portona I I, I, I said it about uh, that at all are you worried you were on about it again now I got uh, <laughs> I don't want to do it. <laughs> I know but on a serious note like that weekend, I spoke to a lad after that weekend and I, and, and I said to myself, no, geez, it's nothing to do with the county final result. But it really showed the intent to me between, uh, for, for St. Thomas, like they the were always going to be poor tunnel down men, etc. Like, you know, and, and they went about their business and they couldn't, couldn't score enough, like, you know. And at the same time, the same weekend, Turlock Moore got beaten by a Clarence Bridge and they weren't fancied, like, you know. Yeah. But you look back to that weekend, Maybe maybe that was the little bit of ruthlessness that w- would turn up more to that again with the with the decide, no, do you know what? I'm playing my best fifteen here. I'm gonna beat Claren Bridge by as much as I can. And it's both ways of looking at it. Because before the game, the last day a lad said to me, he said, Ah, but 
he said, you know what? He said, that could help Turlock now because they've freshened up. They the, the an extra week than Thomas's and they also rested lad that weekend. And so it worked yeah, both no, ways. It's, it, you know, hindsight's a great thing. Like, but that 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 weekend showed me and chatting a few of the Portumna lads and they just said like, I couldn't book the ball out quick enough. And no, because we would have did that in our heyday as well. Like that's the yeah, truth. yeah. I remember chatting with Connor Cooney one day, like, and I told him straight out, like, you know, that that was the way we were thinking as well. Like, and <laughs> we didn't like to see them winning or anyone else. We kind of it just it ended not liking anybody, only yourselves. And maybe that was, you know, it's all right now. You're finished. Like you can look back and you can you don't care who wins. But at that time, when you're not winning yourself, you you nearly want nobody to win. You nearly want COVID to come in and start the championship. Like, <laughs> you know, no invite. They, they seem to have that kind of uh, mentality yeah. where they're. A winning and winning and sure when you have a lad like fucking TJ Ryan running around like lunatic yeah. it's like a 16 man as well Barry Cullinan wasn't long putting manners at him though he backed fairly quick when he came at him he was uh, ah, he, he was, was there. He, was he was perking he was perking I'm not sure <laughs> <laughs> Barry, Barry, Barry's a big man but used to be an old jog and TJ I'd say he'd be getting wiry enough <laughs> the Limerick could come out of him as they say like it's yeah but um I suppose but that, is, that is one thing with them. Like, you probably have experienced as well, Eamon. Like, no more than TJ Ryan does, they're always probably a bit in, you know, they're, they're arguing over everything. Do you know what I mean? It could be a, a line ball, then they'll then, then be demanded that it's theirs. You know what I mean? And TJ Ryan will be in the linesman's ear, or he'll be in the ref's ear, and he'll be, you know, looking for every advantage really that's out there. To do it, but they've always been that way. You know what I mean? Even before this current management took over, they were, they were always that way. And God, they're vocal abroad in the field. And you know, not just at the opposition or referees. They, they, you know, there'll be times there you'll be thinking, Jesus, these lads are arguing. Maybe we have them, but that's their nature. They they demand a certain amount out of the play of the lad beside them as well. Once he puts on that jersey for them, they seem to it comes with responsibility. And if you're not up to it, there's someone out there that's going to tell you. Like one of the other players will tell you one of the lads beside you. So they do. They seem to really have drive in them. Like and like what Chunky was saying there about that you know, ruthlessness, you know, you go up there to play, up to Castle Daly to play a league game, like, and they, they'll be far from, from full strength, but if they get on top of you, like, they'll be trying to drive, and they'll be fighting and scrapping for every ball, you know, even in the middle of summer when they might have four or five lads gone into the county and you think you'd be going up for an easy time, like, no such thing, they'll absolutely scrap for every day they're going out, they're going out to win, and there's, they just don't make excuses, they're not giving themselves any outs, they're not saying that they wouldn't have seen the fact that they had to turn around seven days, they probably turned it into an advantage and, you know, they were probably selling themselves, that's given us the edge. You know, that's mm. the way they think, like, they, they'd never have an excuse, they'd never accept an excuse. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just, just I suppose, Eamon, uh, ye, would ye, Cassie Garrett put Thomas at the start of the year, there's probably preserved, pre perceived weakness, should I say, in the Thomas's full back line, but I suppose Fintan Fintan Burke went back there then and he, he shored it up and he, he made all the difference and he again he was absolutely outstanding, I thought, at the weekend. He was geez, he was catching some amount of ball and like he gave, you know, he was like a brick wall back there at times. Like, you know, he, he, he really made he really made a huge difference when he did go back because say, you know, any any weakness that you might have thought maybe going in was probably, you know, when you played them was probably gone by the time he went back there. Uh, yeah, it was. Funny enough, though, the the very first ball that went in between himself and Kevin Cooney, Kevin Cooney came from behind and, and caught it over his head. And, mm. I mean, he just missed it by... He was one of them the keeper, and he just shot it wide, like... Yeah. Um, but, you know, from there on in, he was solid. Ah, like, the one that Gary Burke broke the hurl, the way he just held him off, and he, he caught it in the hand, like, and you know, and... And Gary Burke was nearly looking at his arm, sort of wondering, <laughs> like, you know, uh, but he's good at his feet, he's good feet on him as well, and he's very good to, he sees the tactic coming, he drops the head, he wins the free if he hasn't the power to get out, which is very, you know, isn't going to be too many times because he's a powerful man, like, but he wins, he's very good at winning the free coming out, he brings up the, the hurl up around the neck, like, and, and, and goes down and gets the free, and high ball, Low ball, I think what Chunky said earlier, maybe they should have put Sean and Ann in there for a while because at least a few of the balls gone out to the corner, he might have had a bit more, you know, in terms of the pace to get out in front of him maybe and, and drag him out of the full back line. It might be Sean and Ann that would have got the would have got the, yeah. the score. But if he had, you know, he might have got out there before Fint and win the ball and it might have opened it up for someone else. But uh, yeah, like look at, he's, uh, you definitely expect to see him in uh, in a maroon jersey in the next couple of weeks anyways. He's a great bit of stuff like him. Massive, like you know, he had a super game against Clamour Daly. He was, he was, um, 
good against uh, like he was good in all their matches so he was like he was good against Cappy as well and Cappy might have played into his hands a small bit they went a bit long and and at times um, Thorlock Moore did as well they, you know especially in the end they went, yeah. they went down his throat like a mm. madness like you know what I mean because uh, he is he's so good in the air and but maybe he's just one of these lads no matter what way you go at him he's, he's going to give you a headache and come up trumps you know I think avoiding him might be the best way to, to be fair to Turkey, Borky was doing all right. Like, you know, he was doing all right in the first yeah. half. He, he got a pint and there wasn't yeah. a lot of ball coming in from what I saw. And he won one or two then in front of him as well. I know he got blocked down for yeah. one of them. But Finton, yeah. in fairness, got a massive block. Like, he probably should have thrown it in. So, but like, he was doing all right. But then once the second half came, Jesus, like, yeah. two things. One, he absolutely upped it immensely. But two, as you lose it there, like, he, Kind of played into into his hands a bit, like you know, dropping ball in there, and it was crazy. Yeah. Like as you said, the power of him, the strength, and yeah, he's the hurling brain, man. like as well, like you know, and he's he knows what he's at, like you know, they played into his hands a bit. Now, to be fair, yeah, yeah. and he's we're probably going better when they were avoiding him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Next, next year, hindsight, and yeah. You know, yeah. <laughs> that's it. But just 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 on next year, then, like you know what I mean? Torlock will have learned a lot from this year, and do you know. What? If they had Dahi, Dahi there maybe the last day, you know, you'd never know what happened. But it's definitely they're they're a team that's going to be around now for a, a long time by the looks of things. Like, geez, they've you're just going through their team there, they've quality all over, like really. I, one led that really impressed me last weekend and has all has all you're done is has been Kevin Hussey. I thought he, he was probably one of one of Thorlock's better players, you know what I mean? Like he was he was so extended, he was bursting forward with ball and he looks mm. a, he looks a great bit of stuff in fairness to him, like so they're 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 definitely a team that, you know, they're not going away anyway, they're only going to improve from this. No, they're not. They're, no, they're definitely not. They're definitely not going away. Like because uh, they're a very young side, and you know, experience probably did come against them with a few things. Like, uh, like as Chunky said, maybe one or two of the chances that they tapped on a pint or went for a pint earlier in the championship when there was less pressure on, they probably would have went for goal. Even one or two of the frees uh, in the second half. Jamie Holland went for one that, geez, he was nailing massive frees during the year. Like, and he, he, he lobbed one kind of in he didn't really go for it he was kind of sort of one of them ones that he was going to hit the target and let it in around the house and the next one then was in his range again and and Conor Walsh came out and put a wide and just I, I think probably just a small bit of experience from them but as I said they're young they probably need to add a few scores um a few yeah. scores up uh up front and it's ironic coming from me because nearly all their forwards scored against Sarsils but you know uh like Conor Walsh looks a fabulous hurler, like very good stick man. Uh, probably needs to contribute a bit more from play for them, so he does, you know what I mean? Mm. Um, on the scoreboard, like, and be a bit more ruthless and a bit more selfish uh, getting his own scores because, you know, Sean Lennon was really their go to man. Barry Cannon in the semi final, in fairness to him, like, he lit it up that day, 1 3, but uh, he only got the point the last day. Um, so they probably need to um, probably just need to be a bit more ruthless up front, like you know what I mean, and 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 get a few more scores on the board. But they're definitely not going away anyway. So they have like as I said, they have a young side, and and uh, you know they're 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 going to be around for a while, definitely, yeah. And that experience will stand to them massively. So it will have getting to the final and being there and two semi finals in a row, like you know. So yeah, next step. The only thing I'll, I'll say on it is like. They definitely will be there, thereabouts, like, and the, the experience is, is massive, like, and, and to lose a county, it's not a nice place, like, we, we won county finals as well, and, and, and lost them, like, you know, lads will always talk about the ones you, you win, like, but, you know, it's, it's tough, the county finals, you lose are tough, like, but the one thing I'll say about them is you do learn, like, you know, and, and nearly everything is focused, no matter how many years you move on, it'll be focused on the performance of the county final, and you'll be, you know, be thinking certain things you need to rectify for the big day that, that, that cost us that day. But the only the other thing is there's so many teams like Sarsfields, like Lee Mellows, like Loch Grey, like Capitagal. It ain't going to be easy to get, just get back into a final and, and say you're going to win it next year. So they are going to have to improve. Like that's the only thing I'd say. They're going to have to improve. They probably need to pick up another one or two players like um, in the fours. And you're right about a few other fours. They probably need a bit more bit more from play, maybe a little more direct. That would be the only thing I had. They, they, they're lovely stick men. Probably need to be a bit more direct, to be fair. Yeah, yeah. Uh, just just like someone like Connor Walsh, though, I suppose he would, like he, 
I suppose he he started he started against Limelo, Limelos. His contribution from open play was 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 serious that day. But maybe the, the scores didn't come as easily. Maybe after that, or you know what I mean. Like, but he's definitely what. Well, I suppose again, you'd you'd expect them to maybe to bring two, maybe one or two, maybe nearly from the intermediates again next year, maybe or you know just to keep it fresh. And right. like they have that, they have that. They have a serious panel to choose from. Like you know what I mean. And they'll have an intermediate team next year and. They what they won the the, the Fela in twenty eighteen as well. So like another two or three years, they'll have them young lads coming through as well. Like there's a there's a, a young lad there. I think he's he's Ian Amana in his name. And Jesus, if you, oh, yeah. we'll, de- we'll definitely yeah. be hearing about this fella. Like he's, what? A, he's, he's unreal. An outrageous forward now. Would like we want we won't build him up too much, but he's only so yeah. young. But they have the players coming through. Like you know they're 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 a, they're a serious team. And like as you said, Chunky, if they add one or two more, maybe from the you know even from the intermediates next year and constantly keep uh, building. Yeah. Listen, like to be fair, like if you look go through even their team the last day, and if they're all so any player playing the county final or any big game, any game championship at all, they're going to rate themselves after the game like out of ten. You know, and most lads have been their own biggest critic. And, and I, I think a lot of the, the Turlock lads, bar, bar a few, they won't be overly happy, like, with their performances. Like, they, they did fine. But, like, there's a lot of them are probably a 6 out of 10. Whereas, in fairness to Hussey, was mm. bang on close to 10 out of 10, to be fair to him. He was he, he must have hit 40 balls, but he was very good now. And mm. uh, Sean Sean Lennon is up close with Fergal Moore for long periods was. Yeah. But af- after that, I might believe not one or two after that, you go back down, like Daniel Loftus was decent, Sean was all right, but all them lads are going to improve. like they, and, and and we've seen throughout the year, they have it in them. like So I, I just don't think they'll be overly happy with the performance. I, I, I think Thomas's were, Thomas's were good. They worked hard, but like the two been told, they weren't fantastic either. Still won oh. the county final by probably as a team, maybe played hurling wise, maybe eight out of ten. There's still a bit more of them as well, to be honest. With a long break with COVID and everything, they're going to be there again next year. Like I didn't even mention them with the with the last yeah. crowd of teams. Yeah. Like so look at Turlock, you'd expect them to be back, like, but they'll be a little disappointed, I think. Yeah, I don't think Franny Ford either when he went in there would have would have thought that it was going to be a one year job. You know what I mean? Like when mm. he got back involved with them, like their management will stick together, and and they wouldn't have. You know what I mean? They know that it's it's not going to be easy, and they'll keep them them lads well grounded, and you know they will definitely come back stronger. But as Chunky said, like sure, every team is every team is going to yeah. look at themselves uh, hard, and especially the teams that don't get the quicker you go out of the championship, probably the harder you're going to look at yourself and 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 pick at little things that you need to improve on and that so like everyone will be coming next year and Thomas is again are on the top of the pile and Thorlock are next and you just start at the bottom and stay knocking them off as best you can or trying to knock them off at least. Yeah. But there's probably not a whole lot of pile between all those teams though that the ones you listed there chunky, like you know what I mean, between your your Sarsies, your Lee Mellows, your Lock Ray, your Thorlock, your Thomas's your Capitagal, like there's probably on most days there's probably only a belt of a ball or maybe a rub of the green oh, between them. They're to me they're all like this was the first year I really got a look at most teams to be honest with the mm. with the streaming and stuff like and oh jeez I was impressed now by a lot of teams like you know like jeez like even aim and your team there like jeez you got 16, 17 was it three lads in the full forward line one day all doing their leaving cert, like you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Probably got a bit, of, a bit, a bit of lucky with Heinzy and lads getting injured, like, and then you go to Loch Ray, wouldn't have known a lot about them. And next thing they produce, like, they've about six lads I've never heard of hurling up a storm down that than Roy, you know, beating yeah. Hammer and Lee Mellows. And up to that, Lee Mellows looked like a team that were probably going to win the county final. And like, just to be honest with you, it's, uh, it's. Yeah, it's a tough championship now. To be fair, it's, and then you have like teams like Climber Daily coming up from from the senior B and stuff like you know, it's it's not in soft. There's nothing. There's not in soft. It's, it's not going to be easy, like you know. So, yeah. But they're well grounded bunch now. That turn of more. All them young lads seem to be well grounded. Like a lot of them are involved in the Galway panels and have been in the under twenties and stuff. So like you know, yeah, they, they won't be disappearing anyway. That's for certain. No, that well, that's probably one thing, Eamon, I suppose, with the Winter County this year, with the club coming first, from a Turlock and Thomas's point of view, they have huge numbers involved with the county pennant. So maybe, you know, another year where they mightn't have been at, you know, 100%, they were probably both, they had everyone for training every night, they were, you know, training as a group, and probably, it probably stood to both teams, do you know what I mean, by, the, by you know, throughout the year. 
I, I'm sure it did, and, and I'm sure it, it probably uh, it probably brought them together more as a bunch as well, because you know when the county fellas come back in after hard training, sometimes I'm sure motivation can be can be low, especially for them games in April when they're when they're still you know there's still matches to be. Played. Um, um, so they might have one eye on their club championship, one eye on Leinster championship, and it's it's hard on them. Like, uh, so probably from that point of view, like it definitely would have brought any, especially because they have so many numbers in the counties. It probably would have brought them together as a group to have them there every evening, and then as well, like you know, the difference between county players and club players isn't just ability. Like it's their mindset, it's the way they train, and. The other players get to see that then they get to see these lads going hard for every ball and training and even if it's only in a warm-up or if it's only in a drill like you know and and for younger lads for panel teams that have young fellas coming through it's great for them to be training with their county players from the off like from their first day in as the senior panel maybe like to be see the county players there the whole time with them it's definitely has to help like you know what i mean and it has to help management as well jesus like to have them lads coming and, and driving it every evening it's it's great like yeah, just on management there, I suppose there's no, there's a bit of doubt over whether Kevin Lally would be going back for, you know, a, a fourth year in, in charge with TJ Ryan. Um, you know, it's kind of it's kind of rumours going around that maybe they, they mightn't. Would that, that would you think that would set Thomas's back much, uh, Chunky? Uh, if that management team weren't to go back next year, I probably wouldn't fancy them. That's, that's calling it straight out, you know. Um, would they have a chance of winning it? Of course they would. Vincent Burke full back, Shane Cooney centre back, Jamie Burke, James Regan midfield, Connor Cooney, and you know, of course yeah. they have a chance. I just think sometimes you have, a, you have a, an unbeaten run like that. You don't like to you like to keep all the parts together. So listen, whenever they get out of the what they say Thursday, whenever they get out of the shade, or if they got some. Outdoor pub summer, I'm sure. I'm sure they're still celebrating. Like, but yeah. uh, look, if they, they they're going to be doing their best to keep them that there. I I know if it was in Butumla, and we I think we had lads that, that disappeared as well after some lads just decide I'm in and, and I'm out. Like, but three in a row, they're getting a good break. They didn't have to train. Do you know what I mean? They had, they had lots of time off now. Unless these lads, like, they're, they're obviously all good, good trainers and, and managers, so they could be wanted by. Inter-county sides as well, like so. That's that's up yeah. to the But I, I can guarantee you that the elder statesmen and Thomas's will be Connor Cooney, David Burke, and them lads. They'll be they'll be knocking on the doors when the time comes. Yeah, well, I, Kevin Lelly is he's got in with the Galway Miners this year, with Brian Henley, anyway. So you know what I mean. So as, as you know, Eamon, it's 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 a serious commitment being a club manager as it is. Never mind, you know, having a you know been in with the miners as well at the same time. So maybe you know maybe that's maybe that's the thinking behind it. If they were to step away now, there's there's nothing confirmed or anything like that. We should put that pull out there before I be, be, be killed. And I I ran the two boys. They're gone. I mean, they're gone. I'm they're team, gone. Team, yeah. team, not allowed back in past court in the future. But no, that's it's it, it, it's a, it's a serious commitment like in itself. Like you know what I mean. So it's. You know, you can understand in a way why lads might, you know, it takes up a huge part of your life, like. Yeah, but he probably had that, um, he probably decided to go in with the minors before the whole COVID thing had came in. So, you know, he was putting himself in that position anyway. So I don't think, I don't know, I, like, I'd say they'll, they, they'd go again. I'd find it hard to believe that, that especially when it's not an agent team, when it's, you know, it's not an old team by any means, and you, as Chunky, went down the middle there with them. Like oh, Jesus, they'd have to. Of course, they fancy their chances, and like you look at, they're going to be the team to beat again next year. So they are. So they definitely like maybe an intercounty setup. I couldn't see them with another club, anyways. Um, why would you leave a club like Thomas's uh, to go to another one? I wouldn't see that happening. So look at, I suppose time will tell, and because there's always something else going on. Hurling isn't the be all and end all of it, and. Um, there's always something else going on for lads so you know it could be a time issue if, if they do but and sometimes it's nice, it's, it's nice to go out on a win as well three in a row and yeah yeah that's yeah. it as well. it'd be great <laughs> <laughs> I'm off lads eh? I, uh, I, I, I might the, be done the, re the restrictions didn't come in till Wednesday so I'm sure they'll teach you Ryan down on some folk there and Castle Daly yeah. and the head uh -huh. Lally and the boys, and ah, yeah, geez, they'll be all right. They have enough of hurdles down there anyway. I'd say the lads will be queuing up to go down there anyway. Then, you know, it's not a place, yeah, they won't, yeah. 
won't be stoked for a manager anyway. No, 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 no definitely that's, not. For, that's for sure. Uh, I suppose just kind of to, to wrap up, lads, it's been a, it's been, a, it's been a serious championship, hasn't it? I suppose the streaming and everything, and you know, the game has been played in the best weather. You know, in it's hard to believe that it's over already. It feels like only the other day it started, like, but with with Thomas's crown, it's been just from your point of view, I suppose, how, what was he, was he even a moment of the championship that you probably most enjoyed or, you know, any, anything, you know, that kind of was a highlight for you, kind of signing off, put you on the spot there now. A Barry Cullinan running after TJ Ryan. Right? <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's very hard to be beaten, all right. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that'd be, that'd be one of them, that'd be one of them. Ah, well, I suppose I didn't see too many of the matches outside our own games, um, but look at, I suppose, the first half between ourselves and Thurlock Moore was definitely a cracking game of Hurling to be watching. Um, I suppose, like for us, just the way the, the Castlegar game finished, Kevin Cooney roofing that ball to the, to the back of the net, and for us getting the whistle. So, you know, from a personal point of view, that'd be the highlight of mine anyway as the championship. But I think the quality of it really was the was the key. The fact that every day you went to Hatton Ryan and Banner Slow, like, was a carpet, absolute carpet, like you know, and those ball was moving well, and players were going really going for it. I think the fact that there was the talk that there might have been no hurling maybe pushed lads on a small bit to to really go for it. And um, no, the quality was definitely up. I felt this year, and I'd put a lot down to the conditions and the time of year it was ran off. Yeah, would that be something you would agree with, Chunky? Oh, yeah, look, yeah. look, just with, look, thinking of it, there, there was a couple of things really, you know. Ascrafona would have to be one, yeah. One, one, one of the big things, you know, for a club like them to people would have nearly been looking at them for relegation. So that'd be one. The, the very first game I watched in the stream was actually St Thomas's and and Castlegar. Uh, to me, I'd say that was probably the best game I watched in a long time. Now, to be fair, I've no yeah. idea how Thomas has won it. Like, absolutely no. I think I look at the score after. I still don't know how they won it, but uh, that that was probably one of the moments really. And and, and a Haskell for one of like you know stuff like that. It's easy. Look at Thomas has looked to one three in a row. Obviously, that's another moment. But um, yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. The, the streaming was brilliant. To be fair, like you know, as I said, I wouldn't have seen any. Like, I wouldn't have seen many of my games the last few years at all. Like you know, only our own games. As I said, well, some of them might have been better off. But we said at home as well. But anyway, <laughs> this is, uh, I come into my own now on the the Monday Tuesday after a county final, all right? <laughs> You'd be just hitting farm now, was it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I was only thinking we're there driving this evening. I said to myself, geez, I, I remember we played, uh, I'll leave you on this one, we played Gort in 2008 final. And I remember Peter Smith showed up in the dressing room and said, We're going to do fancy dress tomorrow. Like, and sure, geez, we got up and we, I didn't know how to put on. I mean, we did next door and bought something, but. Uh, <laughs> Jeez, sure didn't guard it to come over to Bertumna, like you know. And to be fair to us now, we, there was no taking the piss, like you know. But I'd say, I'd say when the beat us in the county final in was it 2013 or 14? I think it was 14. I'd say they were 14, saying, yeah. We're not going down to these fuckers again to watch them get dressed up. <laughs> <laughs> but but uh, like to be fair, like Jeez, the crack after them is ah, sure, look yeah, at like, it. Yeah, Massive, yeah. I, I, and the last thing I'd say is. Hopefully that the the games will get played off in the in the in the near future. All the other clubs look at the J. To me, they needed a kick in the arse. There was a, there was it was blatant to see in some games. Not all games. It might only be five percent, but that's all it needs to take it out. I, I hope the intermediate final in Galway, any other junior junior matches, and around the country. I know Andy Smith's involved in Banner. Like it's just an awful situation to be in. You don't know when you're playing, and it's a nightmare. So hopefully, absolutely. absolutely. Fingers crossed. Anyway, we can we can just get them done and dusted, and the lads can kind of put the feet up instead of having to be slogging around for the next few months waiting. But it's hopefully anyway. That's I, I think they have Pat Kearney's looking for you know a special dispensation, should I say, to get them played. You know, but I, I don't know. You hope so. So look at lads on that. We leave it. Eamon, thanks for joining us tonight. It's been uh, great to have you on, and uh, Chunky, thanks, thanks for everything much. all. Oh, all, 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 all championship will say. Um, and, ju and, ju and just to clear, we weren't taking the piss out of God. Far <laughs> 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 from it. When, when they came over, they were more than welcome, and we we, we mingled mighty, and we were right in the crack. But anyway, and we went over to them likewise when we lost. <laughs> but anyway, just to clear that. Perfect, perfect. Look at we we live it there. We'll say no more. Thanks a million to everyone that tuned in over the last what few months now and. 
you know, I don't, I don't know if we'll be back next week or what the crack is. We'll, I'm sure we'll sort something out anyway, but uh, we'll leave it there. Thanks again.